started. Okay. Royal game. Let's see. It's time for uh, d4. Okay. Uh, f5. You know, I haven't played the Staunton Gambit for a while. Let's, uh, if you guys haven't seen the Staunton Gambit, let's, let's show you what it's like. Uh, you sacrifice a pawn here, then you attack it, and then you attack the uh, knight that comes out to defend it. And um, that's interesting. <laughs> so the move uh, d, d5 is uh, not so great. This allows me to get the pawn back. Bishop takes... Uh, queen takes, knight takes, or just knight takes immediately. I wonder if this is a line. I'm not so familiar with it from here. So knight takes, what's he going to do? Probably bishop to e7. I don't see any great um, tricks. Is there a trick after knight takes? I take his queen. Can he, can he do something? No, okay, he's just going to play there. Okay, well... Check. One advantage of this way of playing is that it's no longer a Dutch, <laughs> so uh, so your opponent is not so familiar with it. Well, it has some similarity, though, doesn't it? He's got the open f file; he can castle for a quick pressure there. But he has no f pawn to push forward and uh, cause trouble. So I'm just going to castle into this and just maintain, a, a hopefully, a larger share of the center with um, c3 and d4. just want to slow down any of his ideas of pushing the center pawns forward. Let's see, I can even go to um, to, d, to e5 with my knight, it looks like. Knight to e5 looks like an idea here. He's not threatening on um, g2. It'd be different if his queen were on g6. That's something to think about. Ah, oh, he just goes there. What other ideas are there? Let's lift up the queen. Okay, I guess if I go all the way to d3, he has bishop to um, <clears throat> bishop to uh, a6 over there, hitting my queen. So defended by the knight. So until the knight moves, I can't really play queen d3. What I was thinking is I thought I could bring this rook over here to the e file, taking a look at his uh, weak e pawn here. He still hasn't developed his knight. That's kind of interesting. What's the plan with the knight? Knight to um, d7, but then where does it go? Knight to a6 or c6? Knight to c6. Okay, so from there, momentarily it's blocking the bishop, but then maybe it goes to... Um, maybe it goes to um, e7 to g6 to contribute to the king side fight. Okay. But I'm just going to continue with this uh, plan. Hmm. You know, he can play bishop a6 here. Um, I'm looking at his um, looking at his e-pawn. That's my idea. Also discouraging him from pushing e5. That, the knight there supports the pawn push to e5. Okay, he's not doing anything against that just yet. Oh, well, he fixed it so that I can't take there with check. Maybe that's the point. Maybe that is a point. Okay, well, here's an idea. I could try b3, c4, d5. Kind of a slow plan. Um, and he, just, he could just take it. Maybe bishop here. Bishop to b3. And it would put another another piece looking at the uh, e6 pawn. Bishop b3. He always has, I have to be careful, he always has um, bishop to a6 looking at the rook in the corner here, which is basically trapped. Not in the corner, on f1. 
<clears throat> at the moment I can interpose with the bishop. If the bishop were on b3, I could play um, c4 to block that. But I have to be aware of that. Let's see. Okay, it's his move. He's thinking. Um, if he does nothing, can I just take it? Okay, he went for that bishop a6 idea. Yeah, I don't think I have anything better than just uh, trading here. And now the rook's uh, pretty safe there. The knight doesn't seem to be doing a whole lot. So I am just threatening to grab that um, grab that e-pawn. So anyway, yeah, the Staunton Gambit. If you have uh, trouble playing against the Dutch, you can try the Staunton Gambit and get your opponent out of his normal uh, lines. And there's a few traps on there. I'll do show you on the postmortem. Uh, you can actually get a, a good position with white if uh, black hasn't seen the Staunton before and doesn't know what to do and plays the natural um, d5. You can check and pick up a pawn and get a good position. You basically get your, your pawn back with a good position. And the line, the way I played it, I got a pawn back. I got my pawn back, but, um, but black had, had an okay position too. which is the nature of the Staunton Gambit. It doesn't really give an advantage to white, just um, <clears throat> just gives you play. You get some interesting play. And you get your opponent out of his book. Okay, what's the move here? What ideas do I have? Besides just taking his uh, <laughs> epon, that's one idea. He could just defend it. Um, I can maneuver my knight. The knight can go to um, d2 to um, e4, hitting the queen. Um, he weakened his light square, so I could play queen to um, queen to d4, knight to um, h4 to g6. That, that would be a nice maneuver. So what's the better of those two? He's defended the pawn, so I'm not winning it right away. If I push, I'm hitting his knight and I'm hitting the pawn. If he takes, I take the rook takes back. I take the rook with check. King goes here. It's basically um, a queen and a pawn for two rooks. It's not that great. So I'm not going to play that. Um, so the question is, do I want to try queen d4? What does he do against queen d4? Does he just bring his queen forward and try and trade? Because I like this knight uh, h4 to g6 idea. If he can just kick my queen. Well, queen to d4 hits the knight. So maybe he plays... Um, <clears throat> maybe he plays e or d. Maybe he plays d5 in response to that. And that makes this pawn permanently weak. The uh, Makes the uh, e pawn backwards and weak. And if he moves the knight... If he goes to um, d7, okay, so he moved it there. If he goes to d7, or e7, then I could take the pawn. Since he went there, though, now I have knight to... Um, knight to h4, threatening this uh, check. He can block that. He can block that with um, king up. No, he can't play the king up. Let's see, what can he do? He can't really oppose... Uh, actually, this is looking pretty good. He could move the king to the side. Or move the rook out of the way of the fork. Okay, so knight here, check anyway. The king comes forward, then I have some kind of discovered check here. It ought to be good. Yeah, I'd like check here and take, take knight. I take rook. So knight here, check. King g8 is the move. And then what? And maybe I just push the pawn forward. Check. Pawn to h4 to h5. Mm, but if I play pawn to h4, and he plays pawn to h5, what do I do then? He might actually be threatening to win the knight. Uh, well, I could play g3, if nothing better, and then give the knight a square on um, f4 to come back to. I like this uh, pawn to h5 idea, just cementing that knight in his position there and 
making it a permanent a permanent annoyance there. So he goes for queen up. That's too bad the square is guarded. <laughs> like queen takes, rook takes, and the knight here check is a fork, but his other rook can just take the knight. Hmm. So if I take first, and he takes with the rook. This pawn is still a bit loose. Maybe I can um, get some mileage against it. I can't really move my queen away. Okay, then I can I can go with Plan B, which was to play um, uh, G3 and then bring my knight back to um, F4. Get more pressure on the um, get more pressure on the E pawn. I can double my rooks. He can chase the knight away with a king move. Or with the rook, rook to f3. The only thing he can't do is move this rook to, <laughs> to uh, f8, which he might want to do. He can't do it because I'm covering that square, and he can't do it because of the fork. Okay, so he comes with the king, which also protects, um, also protects his uh, e pawn. <clears throat> but uh, well, I can jump back now. So after all that, the material is still even. I still think I have some pressure here, but it looks like he's, you know, the thing is this, this pawn is in his camp where he can defend it with all his pieces, so it's hard for me to outright win it. But I can just uh, keep increasing the pressure and see if he uh, cracks at some point. Oh, I thought he was just automatically going to take back with the pawn. If he takes with the rook, does that give me any chances here? See, there's still three defenders on the uh, e-pawn. There's nothing going there. Yeah, so where does the knight want to go? <clears throat> I'm going to h5, and I'll play g4 if I get the chance. which will make that knight a very pesky feature of the position. Um, and if he plays, yeah, he lets me play g4. I was going to say, if he plays g4, then the knight gets this, the f4 square. So one way or another, I'm getting something out of this. The rook comes forward. I can attack it with my king. And that also opens up a line for a rook to the h file if it's necessary. But I wanted to get that pawn to f3 to shore up my... Um, his rook, his rook may be running out of squares. Let's see, will it help me to trade one pair of rooks? I think it will. Let's go into this uh, rook and knight endgame. He has nowhere to go with that rook. Maybe I could have thought more about trying to trap it. But this seems to me to be pretty good. I have this knight I have a weak pawn to attack, and I uh, have a king which can get active, and a rook which can get active. I, he's got the same material, maybe it's still just even with good play. So I'm thinking rook up and over to check his king. He's also got a weak pawn here. Let's see, what are his ideas? He's thinking maybe of pushing the e-pawn forward and liberating his weakness. Um, but that would leave him with two isolated pawns, it seems to me. So for example, pawn takes, pawn takes, the rook over check, and then rook up, and it forks those two pawns. Might be uh, a good continuation for me. Also, with the rook on the f-file, the knight can hop in here sometimes. OK, so check now. Where is the king going? back or here forward check I guess it can't go forward so easily because rook to um, f6 there check 
drives the king back. So this forces the king back and maybe allows a rook invasion, which could be uh, pretty interesting here. This attacks one of his pawns. His knight seems to be kind of out of play. Did, uh, well, I, can, I can go in with the knight now, right? Knight to g7, hitting the pawn. He can still push the pawn forward. Uh, let's see, and then I take, he takes with the pawn, and maybe I come up with my king. I think that's, that's actually my best course here. A bit tricky to tell. His knight actually is doing a good job of defending. It's keeping my rook from going to these light squares where I might attack. He is uh, isolated G pawn. Hmm. Another idea might be to uh, pin the, the <clears throat> pin the knight. Okay. Well, let's try this. I take. I also have rook to. Um, <clears throat> rook to E six here, hitting the. Uh, Pawn. But he has knight there. Hmm. Okay, I'm going to try this. <clears throat> uh, again, I'm hoping for that kind of a uh, rook fork idea, getting my rook to the square. So I'm going to trade his knight off and then play rook to uh, f. Rook to f4 there. Rook to f5. Knight takes d7, king takes d7, rook f5. He can't defend both of them. Okay, but he avoids that. He hits my rook. Now I can attack here. Where is he going? Hmm. He's going to this square, check, which would pick up the rook. Let's see. So let's throw in a check. Check. Where does the king want to go? Now, the, the rook can go to g7 now. These uh, end games with rooks and knights are very tricky. <laughs> you need to. That's why it's good to have some time on the clock at this point in the game. You've got to calculate all those forks. His knight has two checks that it can throw in here. Of course, there I take it, but here is a serious check. I've got to worry about that. And if I play king up, he's got rook here check. I have knight back. Okay, so that's all right then. Um, so should I just go after this pawn here? Check. Yeah. So here, in this position, he can't um, check me with the knight. But he can get there and defend the... Uh, that's kind of amazing. <laughs> I can still defend... <laughs> He can still defend. Let's see, where are his checks? His checks are here and here. Okay, so let's attack his knight. Mm hmm. Okay, if I go here with the king has one check, which is here, and then I can take the pawn, or he can try and defend the pawn. I think I'm, think I'm rounding up this pawn one way or another. <laughs> yeah, so he goes after my pawn. Not, not a bad plan. Okay, so I take, he takes. I take the uh, knight. He comes here with check, trying to uh, win the knight back, or win my rook, even. And uh, and that works. I can't interpose the knight because my king is up here, and he can just take it. So uh, well, let's um, keep these <clears throat> keep these pawns on the uh, king side and give up a pawn on the queen side over here. Check. 
In this position, I can interpose the knight. But he has a check. Yeah, that would not be safe. Okay. Yep, so he grabbed a pawn, and I'm not even getting his pawn. That's that's annoying. And he's threatening another pawn. Let's see. So if I go here. Let's see. I need to pile up on this guy, I guess. What's the best way to do it? Check. Oh, man. <laughs> see what I said about uh, keeping in mind all of those checks? Okay. Uh, well, he won this one, so I will uh, resign. And uh, White resign. Upload this and do a postmortem. See you guys later. Bye.